yo, yo, yo. What it do, what it do. What's happening, family? I think this episode 17 of Easy Does It Podcast. Back for another week. Talk about some some real stuff, some topics going on in the world, and clown a little bit, because you know we need a little bit of that in life. I got a special guest today. Um, y'all might know him from a couple other podcasts. Too many people, they talk about him, they say stuff about him, but you know what I'm saying? I say, you know, I think he a funny guy, man. You know, nice nice guy, man. So I said, let me bring him on the podcast, man, and, and, and let him talk some talk, man. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? But I just can't get over his voice in real life. Man. This is really you laughing crazy, at man. the radio voice, man? Because you look like spoken reasons, but you got like the slave master voice, and it's throwing me off. And this is really funny, man. It's really funny, man. <laughs> it's throwing me off, bro. Man. Come on, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. This is it, man. This is this it, is my man. radio voice, man. I, I talk like this in real life, but when I get on the mic, I like to give it a little flavor. To have some personality, you know what I'm saying? Because I, if I get on here and be like, well, welcome to Easy Does It Podcast. Definitely. And this is episode 17. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, you got to give it a little flavor, man. Nah, that's why the Easy Does It Podcast is better than Random Ass Podcast. So oh, see, that's guys, how we're going to start it off. Let me tell you, I ain't, I'm going to leave that alone. Nah, I'm not. I'm <laughs> niggas, <a> li- <laughs> them niggas ass. <laughs> hey, this is quality over quantity. These niggas, I'm going to drop a video every week. Dumbass niggas. They need to learn from this man. This man brought a notebook full of ideas. These niggas, we're just going to go off the top of the head. Bunch of niggas, man. <clears throat> That's how we're gonna start this off. It is what it is, man. Yes, sir. But then my niggas though, shout out RAOP. Y'all know y'all the reason I did this. And why is a FSU? I don't know. Yeah, I'm a this gator. This ain't my this ain't none of my stuff, all my people. Cause I'm a gator fan. Yeah, I'm a gator nigga too. Born so. and raised. Yeah, so do you. But yeah, man, but how was your week, man? What's um, today? Today is Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, how was your week, man? Well my birthday was this week, so that happened. Um that's really about it. It's my birthday. When was your birthday? The third. So that was third. a Saturday. Saturday. What you did on your birthday? I didn't do anything. I don't have a life. So. Well, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You stay out of trouble that way. Yeah, pretty much. I'm never in trouble. So just sat at home, looked at TV. Or I um, watched uh, what came on Saturday. No, I mean, my birthday present really was the Patriots beating the, uh, the Packers on Sunday. So. Yeah, Patriots got that steam back, man. Yes, sir. Always, man. We go through a little struggle every year. Like, people always be like, oh, Tom Brady's done. The first two games of the season, then he come back and turn up. So, that went weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know us, Jag, when we beat y'all week two or three, whatever that was. Yeah. You know, that it was true. People were saying, like, this is Jaguar Super Bowl. They were right. Because that's the most success or happiness or, or, or validation that we felt. I don't know when, hell, since last year in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So it's like they put all the energy into beating the Patriots, and they were just like, "We done, yeah, <laughs> we done winning for it, this man. year." <laughs> that was a Super Bowl. So hey, shout out the Jaguars, man. They put too much into it, man, <laughs> and they they burn out. <laughs> they had sixteen, well, more than six. If you make it to the postseason, mm-hmm. they put it all in too early, man, and burn out. I don't like. I said, I feel like they was very salty about that playoff win. I mean, playoff loss last year against the Patriots, and they were just like, "We gotta win this. If we don't win no other game this year, we gotta beat Tom Brady." They beat them, but they paid the cost of not winning no other games. So. Yeah, man, you know. Hey, man. <laughs> What's the record? Three and something? Three and five, I think. Do you I think, think you're making the playoffs this year? Um, I, I doubt it, man. I, I just I don't see it because we got injuries and Blake is not playing well. And Fournette, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Is he going to come back? I'm not going to slander any of the players. I do that enough, but um, – Blake injured himself, ain't he? Like something wrong with his arm, something wrong with his wrist, or something, something, something. But you know, it's just just one of them years, man. Some years, like last year, we were very fortunate to like not have many injuries, but Mm -hmm. Allen Robinson the first game, and then the other, the other, other years, teams have a lot of injuries. So is Blake the quarterback of the future? No, 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 no. I'm glad you know that because a lot of people are still trying to cape for him. I don't know why, but a lot of people are trying to uh, cape for him. I- I'll give a little inside story. I don't never think I told this on air, but um, <laughs> I don't know if I even should say this, but I'm going to say this right here. So I-, I got a home where I work at the Omni Hotel, and that's where all the Jaguars players, that's where they stay before the game because they do like team bonding or whatnot. So um, I'm going to just say an unnamed wide receiver, uh, like after they lost, I think to the 
What was your last game y'all lost? It, it, that, it, that, that was here. Y'all played somebody. The Cowboys, y'all played them here? No, they, y'all played them in no, Dallas. It was, um, was it the Texans? Texans, maybe. The Texans. Maybe the Texans. Yeah, it was the Texans. So, um, yeah, so he said that, um, I'm just saying, unnamed wide receiver brother, he came out the hotel with the wide receiver, and they seen Blake Bortles, and the brother was like, man, I should goddamn knock this nigga out, talking about Blake Bortles. <laughs> And the and the unnamed wide receiver was like, man, just chill out, man. He's like, no, nah, man, nigga, ho. Oh. And he was going to beat up Blake Bortles. So, shout out to that wide receiver for telling his brother to chill out. Because Blake Bortles would have been knocked out in the Omni Hotel. Wow. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. And I'm, that was his brother talking like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hint. Um, The nigga, uh, <laughs> the nigga brother last name is a street in Jacksonville. So, if you live in Jacksonville, you, you got it already, man. Yeah. So, you already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. But you like you say, man. I think the Pats good, good yeah. to go. They they you know they 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 done shifted back and gear. They got the wide receivers on deck. They you know Tom Tom flowing O line blocking better for them, and Jags is uh going downhill. So <laughs> it's whatever, man. But who are you, man? Um, before we get into that, I want to get into because I don't think you'll bring this up. No. How uh, our first ever encounter? Um, <laughs> you like you was roasting me for like a good three minutes. You know what I'm saying? It was a uh, thing. Amp said something about Eric. He was like, "That's a nigga with the bonnet," and he was like, "He was like, yeah." He was like, "That little nigga silly man." <laughs> He's a, <yeah. laughs> it's a silly young nigga right there, man. <laughs> hey, and um, yeah, you just get me out of here. But then you came back to your to to, to your. Uh, to your gratitude, he came back like a couple weeks later. He was like, "You know what? He a young nigga. You know, I ain't gonna, I ain't even gonna give him this case no more, man. I'm gonna just let the young nigga live." So, I salute you for that, man. I have to check myself, man, cause like I'm getting a block better at it now. Like I usually say stuff like off the top and don't think think about what mm-hmm. I say. And I ain't know who you were. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I'm thinking about, it, I'm from the hood, so I'm like, okay. What type of nigga wearing a bonnet? <laughs> you wearing a bonnet right now. Mm-hmm. I told Amp, I said, you can't be wearing that around here, man. They, these niggas mess around and put you on the corner, that's man. A, that's a funny thing, because I knocked on the door, and I didn't realize I had the song. I was like, damn, I'm walking in niggas' like, random like apartment. <laughs> I, I go to Amp house, and I don't know. I just have bad, uh, what's the word, like geographical sense. So You get I, lost. Yeah, I get lost. So I went to the wrong apartment door, and I'm knocking on it, and I hear a dog. I'm like, that damn house don't got like a dog. And he called me. He like, bro, you at the wrong house. I'm like, oh man. But um, yeah, no, I usually don't walk around like random neighborhoods with bonnets on. But I wore this just for you, man, because I know you like the bonnet. So I just I want to walk in with the bonnet on. So man. what does the bonnet do for you? I mean, it's does it? Is it? I mean, is it functional or you just is a trolling type? Thing? Nah, you you ever seen um the Kanye West interview with Donald Trump where he said this is his like Superman cape? This is my Superman cape. Yeah. No, that's this isn't that's that's a that's a troll right there. Cancel this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wear this bonnet is because it's healthy for your hair. Like if I had a low cut, I would wear a do rag, but I don't have a low cut. I have a nice amount of hair. So if I wear a do rag, it would just press my hair down. Women with like um like finger waves in their hair, they wear do rags so or braids, they like so you can keep it down or whatever. But I don't have my hair in braids, I have my hair out. So when you have your hair out, as a man or a woman, you're supposed to um Wear bonnets because it's silk. It's supposed to sleep on silk sheets and yeah. Yeah, my my um my girl she wears a silk uh head wrap to bed. Yeah, just yeah. So, so it keeps so. your hair moist and, yeah. and uh, so you got long hair. You got a fro or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I used to have long hair. I used to have braids. And I had a perm. Oh really? They used to call me Andre Three Thousand back. That's in funny. High why did you Why did you cut it off? I just got tired of it. That's how I feel sometimes. I'd be like, I don't want to deal with all this anymore. So yeah. I feel that. I definitely feel that. Yeah. Then the, the girl I was with that time used to maintain it. You know, it was down on my freaking shoulders. So. Mm. And then we broke up, and it's like, I can't I can't do this by myself. You so, got pictures of this? Uh, I think. You like I don't a, have them on me. They might be at, at home. Did you like a pimp or something? No. I used to, When I was young, I used to want to be a pimp. That's funny. When I was young... <laughs> Like my um, I was probably like ten, eleven years old, and my and my neighbor in Gainesville, she asked me like, "What did I want to be?" Mm-hmm. And I told her pimp, and I'm just you know I'm yeah, I knew what a pimp crazy. was. I knew they had a lot of women, but yeah. I didn't know how they treated. Women. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's so. Funny. I liked women when I was young, so I said I want to be a pimp. And she went and told my mom, and my mom was like, "What?" <laughs> like she was like. 
She was so upset. Well, you say you're a hood nigga, so I would imagine that's what maybe like a hood nigga would see or whatnot. But I guess to bring I'm it, not a, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I'm not a hood nigga. So you take that back. You're not a hood nigga anymore. You're a hood. not no more. But you grew I'm up from yeah. You're yeah, from the hood, yeah. but you wouldn't say you're a hood nigga still though. No. So you're like a reformed hood nigga. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. did you like? Why? What makes you a reformed hood nigga? Um. <clears throat> What makes me a reform? I don't do those type of things. I don't. Uh, I don't hang out in the hood anymore. Period. But you still have hood principles. Yes, yes. That's that's what I'm saying. So okay. So so to go back to your hood principles, like like you say, you see me like walk around this neighborhood with a bonnet on or whatever, and it's like, yo, you might get, you know, what I'm saying, niggas might think you sweet or whatever. Like like, <laughs> what are things? <laughs> like 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 looking at me, like no like no background in my history or where I'm from or anything like that. Like like what? How would you perceive me? Taking yourself back 10 years, you being a hood nigga, and you see me in your neighborhood walking around. Like, how would you take me? Oh, I would have definitely thought something was up with you. I would say, get that nigga out of here, man. <laughs> when you say something up with me, what does that mean exactly? There's something, something wrong. Because? I don't know what, because you got on the bond. And you, if you wear the bed, that's fine. You mm-hmm. do your thing, but you walking around at 9 o'clock, at 8 o'clock at night with a bonnet on, you know. But if you see a woman with it on, you wouldn't question it, right? I mean, I would think she was a ratchet chick. Okay, okay. okay. You know, chicks that wear that type of stuff out in public. Well, you know, I mean, you I'm like, saying like walk around the neighborhood though. Like she like going to her car or something. Like if you see a chick walking to her car. Yeah, that's not as bad. Okay, okay, okay. You know, that's not as bad. But right. you clearly came from another location <laughs> and came over here, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely, okay. definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. So I, what else? Because I, I like, I would, I'd be curious. Like if you see me just walking around the neighborhood, like what would be your first judgments? Like you, you know, what I'm saying before talking to me, like you'd be like, this nigga. This nigga sweet. This nigga look cool. Like, like what would no, you say? That's what I'm saying. Cool like, at all. that's what I'm saying. It's like, what, what would be your first impression overall? I would think like something was wrong with you. Okay. Like, either you were slow or either you were gay. Okay, that's really <laughs> that's, that's first, two that amazing categories. Either gay, or either slow. <laughs> I don't know how those two things correlate, but hey, man, shout out to the- because you think you slow, you don't know no better. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. Like definitely. you know, slow people do stuff out of ordinary. Definitely, like definitely. they have issues. Uh, and gay people, they just you know flamboyant. They do stuff definitely, like definitely, what, definitely. what a woman would usually do. Definitely. Yeah, now I never come in here with my bonnet on. I always have it like in my hand or whatnot. But like I said, man, special occasion for <laughs> for from a dude over here. Okay, man, you know what I'm saying? I get it, man. Yeah, I get it. Why well, ain't off you no know, alcohol? Yeah, you didn't. You're the first person when I. You, this is the first time I've ever been to Amp House, and I haven't been uh, off of alcohol, so that's pretty cool. Well, like you say, next year, you know, you're gonna have to. Uh, well, I ain't gonna say that. That'll be problematic. What you gonna say? But <laughs> who are you, man? Back to where we was, man. Who, what What did you do, man? What you known for? Because I just found this out today. I was talking to David on the phone, and he told me, you know, what you about your uh, YouTube channel or whatnot. And uh, I went scrolling through. I looked at a lot, listened to a lot of your videos. Mm-hmm. So you uh, didn't. So, so you didn't know that about me. That I, I had no clue. Said, <laughs> every time I go into podcast, people just think I'm like some professional troll. And I just don't do anything. But no, I actually um, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Eric the Young Guy. And um, yeah, I basically review music. I interview people. I review food, like local little food restaurants, and everything else under the sun. I just I talk about whatever interests me. I do a live. Little like live podcast, like every Thursday or Wednesday. I'm doing one tonight when I get home. So yeah, that's that's really about it. Interview a lot of people. I seen the interviews, man. Like I was like, what is this? You know, it's like to me, it was like you know, you got certain people that's like they're um, I can't think of the term, but they're like it's not mystic, but you just don't know what they do. You just don't know. What they're about, and then yeah. you took a look around. I'm like, what in the hell? Like, where this nigga? Yeah, I'm like, fa- where this come from? Like, I, I mean, what's some of your favorite, some of your favorite interviews? Because I seen a few of them. What were some of your favorite interviews on your uh... that I've done? Yeah. Um, I don't know, cause all my favorites aren't my biggest. It's like the ones that like people really wouldn't like know about, like are people like um like I interviewed this chick called Napalm. You might know her from uh, she's the intro. The sample from my Drake Free Smoke with the lady singing, that's Napalm. Um, she actually been recently diagnosed with breast cancer, so mm. pray for Napalm. Um, who else is like one of my favorites? I interviewed Honorable C Note, the producer. That was a, I was like one of my first favorites because he was a really, really good person to talk to. 
So I mean, off the top of my head, I just think of like Napalm, Honorable C Note. Those are like some of my favorite interviews I've done, and Trick Daddy too. Yeah, Trick was Trick was good. I yeah. think uh, Trinidad was good too. Ooh, I forgot Trinidad about that one. spoke well. Like yeah, he, yeah. he was like he. He was a good interview. He was like engaging. Definitely, definitely. Like it was a few <laughs> on there that I was listening to. I was like, like this nigga. You could tell niggas was they was blazed out of there. Something yeah, was wrong with him. I'm like, why definitely. why get like that when you're doing an interview? Now it's um that's crazy. It, I have like a hundred over a hundred interviews, so I'd be forgetting. Yeah, turning that that's a good one. Like when you say somebody blazed out of their mind, I think probably my worst interview probably will never be topped. It's probably young nudie. Interviewed him and um that was just wasn't a good interview, man. He like we got on the phone. And like he wrote his blunt for ten minutes, the interview was like six minutes. It was really, it was really not a good interview. It was hard. Like he wasn't giving me nothing. Like I think a fan question was like, uh, "Did you get your name nudie from wearing uh, nudie pants?" And he was just like, "Hell nah, no, I ain't wearing no nudie pants, nigga. What the fuck you talking about?" Ain't? And I was just like, "All right." <laughs> and he wasn't really giving me anything. It was, it was really wild, man. So I think I asked him. Um, I was running out of questions because he was answering them so, like, just basic. So I was just like, did you do good in school when you went to school, man? And he was like, school? Psst. He don't know what that is. Yeah, exactly. He didn't answer questions. He just laughed. He said, Psst. Yeah. And I was like, you going to answer it? And he was like, man, I was chilling that bit. You hear me? And I was like, all right, man. So, yeah, I was just that was one of the interviews. That's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, I think it's crazy. I mean, if you're going to do an interview, at least... Try to be interactive. Definitely. And, you definitely. know, and make it worth worth yeah. your while. Yeah. I mean, you're wasting two, your time and somebody else's time yeah. doing it. But, uh, yeah, that's cool, though, man. So, check them out. What's your YouTube page? Uh, it's E-R-I-C, Eric, the, T-H-E, Young, Y-O-U-N-G, God. So, G-A-W-D, Eric, the Young God. Got some good interviews on there. I ain't going to talk about the. I, I just say the this. I ain't gonna talk, but there's some problematic stuff on there too. But like y'all what? can see all of that stuff. <laughs> like what? The sex workers. <laughs> Is that really problematic yes. though? Yes. <laughs> That's what they do for a living. Well, <laughs> this, you gotta think about. So I'm at work. Mm -hmm. I'm on the phone. Mm -hmm. Devin. Yeah, check out his YouTube. He be interviewing people. Mm -hmm. So I see this chick, and I'm like, what was her name? It was something come. Celebrity comes. Celebrity, and I, you know, I saw the way comes was spelled. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so I watched like two minutes, and I was like, I'm done. But, but you know, if y'all into that, y'all can do that and watch that. But you know, it just wasn't for me. But like a lot of other ones yeah, were. That was pretty ridiculous. All those, like all those sex work interviews, those are, those are wild. So yeah, if you if you're not ready for those, don't click on those, man. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah man. But I'm gonna transition over. So. Today I had was my last day of court, so I've been going through child support court, mm -hmm. and uh, I got a lawyer. I was contemplating on it. I didn't. I didn't talk about this until I. I wanted to wait till it was over. So, um, I just want to tell a lot of fellas out there: if you're going through stuff with your girl or your baby moms or whatever it is, and you fighting and she doing you wrong and and taking the child and won't let you see him and. And all that type of stuff, and you just not getting your due, you know, you have rights as well. Um, you have rights, you know, if, if that's your um, child, you know, they're going to do a DNA test and all of that. You can go and get a get a lawyer. You can do it by yourself, but it's a lot more difficult because you got to go to child support court first. And they don't show you no love in there. They like, uh, you know, disrespectful. They don't show the man no love. Just tell you straight up. Mm. I ain't trying to, you know be negative or, or not but i'm just telling you the truth on how they treated me you know got a lawyer and and we did our thing man in the end the lawyer had grace on me and and everything worked out man everything worked out today was the last day of it we settled in the mediation the two months ago um and today was we just went back for no reason because they didn't tell us it was canceled but uh that's it, man. I just wanted to say some things, man. If y'all have any issues, get your lawyer. Find your good lawyer. Pay that three thousand, whatever you gonna have to pay. Get your lawyer. Uh, do what you gotta do, so you um so you can get your rights. I got share. You can get shared custody 50, 60, 40. They got fifty fifty as well. Get your holidays. You swap those every other year. 
your uh your taxes, you swap those every other year. Um you get your time sharing, you get them on the weekends or whatever. The more you can get your child, the the lower your child support is going to be. Mm. So if you can get your child as much as possible, do that. Or at least try to get it on the books in the order, you know, through through the court process. Try to get as much time sharing as you can because it'll make your child support um a lot less than if you only see them twice a month. You know what I'm saying? Two 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 weekends a month or whatever. Try to get a, get your child every weekend, three four days, and you'll be good, man. But you uh, you ain't got none of these problems. I mean, my my mom and dad are divorced, so same thing happened. Okay, my Not- mom and dad divorced too when I was uh twelve. I was like four, so oh, that's been a while. Yeah, so like, but no, they went through the same like custody thing, so. I didn't like. I wasn't there, but like, you know. So did it affect you? Uh, like in what way? Um. Well, for instance, when I was twelve, it affected me because, <clears throat> you know, my dad was pretty much always there. He filmed the football games. He filmed mm-hmm. our basketball games. He did all that type of stuff. And then when you figure out, it was like boom, you found out they getting divorced. You know, it was like. We found out, and then a week later, he was gone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like no warming up to it. You know, in a month, you know, that we would going through this. Your daddy going to be moving. It was like one week, we found out, and the next week, that was it. So, like, that's what I mean. Like, that, at first, that, uh, you know, that played a, that played a part on us. No, nah, definitely. Oh, me, I guess. That, um, mine was like in the middle of the night. Just remember them like talking. He just left or whatever. So it wasn't like a warning at all. Just woke up and it happened. But yeah, it played a part of like me growing because I just grew up with my mom. Like I went over, like I, I know my, like I'm cool with my dad or whatever. But like I would only go over there like every other weekend. But um, so yeah, it it, it shaped me who I am. Because if I'm pretty sure if I grew up with a dad in my house, uh, I would I don't know, I'd probably be a different person. But it's just me and my mom. So. I mean, was was he there? Was he there most all the time? Yeah, like it, like it's, I wouldn't have like an estranged relationship or anything. Like, like I still talk to him. Like I I, I guess I used to go over to his uh, house every other weekend, like come see me or whatever. So yeah, it wasn't like he's a deadbeat dad or anything like that. It was just the house was just me and mom because I'm the only child. So dang, so you got everything. Yeah, like I'm. That's why I am the way I am. Like I'm a. I think I'm an interesting person. I don't know too many people like me because. Like I said, just I grew up by myself. I didn't really have a lot of friends, so like, not like my I didn't talk to my dad every day. Well, I, did, I wasn't near my dad every day, so you know, I kind of taught myself how to how to be myself. And uh, Twitter taught me how to be. So okay, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, high school. Well, like, well, it depends on who you hang out with. High school taught me. Rap music taught me. Mm. <laughs> you know, that ain't a good thing, but it did. You know, I used to listen to. Uh, a lot of Pimp C, mm. Gucci Man, of course, T.I., Young Jeezy, all that stuff. But probably my in high school was probably UGK, Pimp C, and Bun B. I think high school just taught me it's a lot of dumb niggas out there. Because I went from uh, going to a college prep school to Darnell, then going to First Coast. And I just I just seen now how, how, how not to live. Because there's a lot of niggas at Coast that live good lives, but um, they go into like... Just doing dumb stuff for no reason because they think it's cool. They say you try and be cool, so there's a lot of trying to be cool type niggas out there, and that just showed me not to be like that. So high school taught me. So that's coast. Yes, yeah, a I lot. I went of, to coast. I graduated 2006. Uh, so you probably know my brother, maybe, because he graduated 2007. Um, dude named Chanzel. He had dreads, light skin, dude. No, I, mean, I probably have to see him. Probably have to see him. I, I'll show you later. But um, yeah, like uh, first coast. I mean, there's definitely some hood niggas out there though. But it's just a lot of trying to be cool type niggas out there. You got and I, you know it's crazy. I found out. I thought it was like a new thing, but uh, when you was there, it was the clock tower kids out there. Yeah, that's a tradition. That's crazy. Like, why is that still going on? Yeah, we used to have a riots like with dumb kids. Like, like, like why is that still a crazy. thing? It's still a clock tower kids to this day, and that's really crazy to me. So. Yeah, that was a cop, and then if y'all, they like gothic. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they're the weird, so like yeah. unsocialized. Kids. <laughs> yeah. 
So, you know, it's a few, you know, they just go down and hang out, lunch, yeah. uh, all that type of stuff. They just, they, that was their area under the clock tower. I just don't know how did that still, like, carry I would have thought, like, when they graduate with y'all, it'll leave. But, like, the tradition still goes on. Like, we still refer to those kids as the clock tower kids. That's crazy. <sighs> yeah, it, it held this. <laughs> That's crazy. It held its mark. Dude. When I was the first, when I got the first coast, I moved here from Gaines, and that was a culture shock. Because Gainesville, I went to Gainesville High School, you know what I'm saying, get the first coast. And before I even get there, before school even started, I moved over the summer, <clears throat> somebody had glued the lock shut. Mm. Every door lock, they glued it shut. And then somebody brought a gun to school. Like one of them little kids brought a gun to school. Oh, the class school kids. In the in the duffel bag. I think he was something like that. Yeah. So right then I'm like, oh crap! Like, what am I finna be getting into? Yeah. Because in back in my old high school, I was there with all my high school friends. Mm. So, but when I got here, it was just I ain't had I ain't know nobody. I was like, oh shoot! It was how long like, you how long you went to coast? Uh, two thousand. Four, so two years. Tenth mm. grade to yeah to twelve, yeah. Yeah, every time I went to coast, it was somebody here with a gun, but it was like the hood niggas, so I didn't really feel threatened. I don't think a hood nigga would like shoot up the school. Yeah, we uh, yeah, it was definitely instances, but yeah, yeah, I never had that worry either. But we had a couple guys, a couple guys bring guns to school, <laughs> like the clock tower kids. I don't remember no hood dudes, but. It was more, it was, we had race riots. Yeah, we never really had a race riot or anything. It was just, just niggas fighting. Like, I remember one time, like, like I said, it was niggas just carrying out guns. Like, I remember this one time, this nigga knocked on the door because we wouldn't let him in. He was like, man, y'all niggas let me in. Everybody was just looking at him. And he just flashed his pistol at the door. He was like, man, y'all niggas let me in. <laughs> and, and then, like, niggas wasn't even threatened. They were just like, all right, man, we'll stop playing. Like, it wasn't even like, oh, my gosh. Like, all right, bro, you win. I was like, yo, y'all niggas different. So, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Hamadou. Yeah, that's crazy, man. One one time we was there, and I don't, I don't want to blame it on Clock Tower kids, but some white kids put some uh, dolls or some, some kind of pictures up on a noose, mm-hmm. like a black people on mm-hmm. nooses, mm-hmm. and that was it. I mean, it, it popped off. It nah. popped off that day. That was like one of the craziest times we had. Uh, I think the craziest time I had at Coast was probably, um, I don't know if you know the story about a nigga named John L. Johnson. Dude uh, basically got shot at the prom at the party. And um, yeah, bro died. It was pretty crazy. And I remember wow. like, the next day we came back. You know, like when you walk inside the courtyard before school, everybody be kind of like talking and whatnot in the bell ring. You go to class, it was dead silent. Like nobody was talking. Then right before the bell run, you hear just ah, and it's like his girlfriend crying to God. And it, that was that was a crazy day. So yeah, that was probably the craziest time. And then that whole day, the, the one of the niggas that like supposedly killed, bro, they was looking for the nigga because he was on the football team, the nigga that died, so they was like looking for the nigga that killed him. I had class with one of the niggas who was with the dudes that allegedly killed him, and they were like, bro, where that nigga at? We, we finna fuck that nigga. Like, it was going crazy, and it was just like, everybody was paranoid that day because like, niggas thought something was finna happen, so yeah, that was a really crazy day. Yeah, I would've went home. I wouldn't be able to handle that. Yeah, that was, that was wild. Cause you said you, you be dealing with like anxiety sometimes, so like niggas with anxiety problems, I'm pretty sure it was just yeah, I wouldn't be able to handle that yeah, pressure. That was, that was you know, crazy. I knew, and I don't want to, now that I say this, because my girl deal with anxiety, and I didn't understand it, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm peeling off a, of, uh, what's old boy name? Charlemagne? Yeah, because, you know what I'm saying, this, this mm-hmm. is the big talk, Yeah, but that's not mm-hmm. really, you know, it's just some stuff I'm learning about, because she Definitely. deal with anxiety, but I just thought I would be in a sissy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I thought. No, I feel you. I feel you. Because it was like, okay, like I, I, I have social, like I have social anxiety. I can't. It's hard for me to talk in front of crowds, mm-hmm. public speaking. I can't do it at all. Yeah, it's like my mind go blank. I be about to pass out. You know, <laughs> sweats, everything. But uh, but yeah, man. But yeah, man. So. When she was telling me about the stuff she was going through, like, I ain't never really had no all-out panic attack. Mm-hmm. But I've had issues, like, where I get so stressed out, I get in certain situations mm-hmm. to where I get, like, a chest pain mm-hmm. and, and that type of stuff. But, you know, nigga, you know, you just kind of deal with it. 
Well, you know, you say that you thought you'd been a wussy and, you know, you like, got like hood niggas principles or whatever. As you get older, do you see yourself, like, I guess, opening your mind to different stuff, to, like, realizations or whatever? Because, like you said, you probably would never thought 10 years ago that you had anxiety. You probably thought you was being, like, you know, just, like, a wuss or whatever, like you said. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so, I guess, see, you didn't know me. See, you hear about all the stories they tell about me. Mm-hmm. Um, but so my thing is I'm trying to change like day by day. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to change in a, in a better way. Mm, like I ain't good. trying to stay the same. I'm always trying to change, renew my mind. That's good. Yeah. And, uh, and change. But yeah, I would, uh, I'm always trying to, you know, figure out new stuff and, and learn and learn about things and try to put myself in other people's shoes and, 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 I guess understand they struggle. Do you have something that like the big thing you're trying to work on right now? Like if it's like a like a list you had to make, like is it like a number one thing where he's like, yeah, that's my target where I'm trying to focus to like really work on reading. Reading, mm, that's good. Yeah, I hate reading. You hate reading. I hate, I math. hate reading. What's wrong with reading? I I can't like. I'm not interested. It's mm. like. The comprehension part. It's like I read stuff sometime and then some. You know, I don't, I don't get nothing out of what I read. Then I got to go back and read it again. You know what I'm saying? So it's just some of the stuff book, books don't interest me. Mm. I feel that. No, that's um, that's that's cool that you can uh, that you can like admit that like you don't like reading because I know a lot of niggas they'll be kind of like afraid to you know I'm saying like no. so that's, that's good that you got the admitting part down already. So yeah, I mean I ain't like Devin. I'm not illiterate. <laughs> You know, I can read, but I just don't enjoy don't, reading. Like, no, nah, I don't like reading either. Like, I can read, but it's I wear the watch like a documentary or something. I, I like documentaries, but not reading. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can yeah. give it to me in a documentary form, I'll watch it. I mean, yeah, man. Even that, uh, what's that? Audio. Audio books? Yeah. What's that? Amazon. Uh, like an Audible or whatever? Audible, yeah. Yeah. Like, I listen to the Gucci Man book and some other stuff, but. Like I have books, man. Like Christian books, and and I try to read the Bible and stuff. But that's that's like I say, that's one thing that I want to, because I think reading is is beneficial. Yeah, you know definitely, definitely, definitely. So that's one thing, man. What about you, man? One thing. One thing I'm trying to work on. Um, I don't know. Like, if anything, I'm, I'm not trying to work on it, but I know it's a it's a thing of mine. I'm a moody person. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, I'll be. Like, let's say if I'm hyped to do this, uh, like in an alternate universe, I could have been hyped to do this podcast. And when I got here, I was just be like, I want to go home now because I don't know why. It's just I'm a moody person, but like I'm hyped to do this podcast. I'm just saying like that's what probably happened in an alternate universe. Or like when I get home, I could just be like, yeah, I'm going to play the game. Then when I get home, I'm just like, uh, I just want to go to sleep now. Like I'm just really moody. I could be on the phone with somebody. I'm like, ah, I don't really feel like talking to you anymore. Like, I don't know. I'm a moody person. So like when I go out to interview people sometimes, I don't want to be there. I just want to go home. So. I don't know, man. It's, that's something that I realized about myself. I'm real moody. So you have highs and lows. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's really weird. Like, um, people look at me on YouTube and they might think I'm like some, or just listen to me on a podcast. Like I'm just crazy and whatever, whatever. But people who know me in real life, if you see me out and about, I'm real quiet. Like I don't really talk that much. I don't really like talking to people. I don't like really talking to new people. I'm a really quiet person. So I'm not really a person to be. On the like on outside eye ah, being crazy or whatnot on camera, I bring it to life. Cause I know it's people want to see, it, but that's not really me like off the camera at all. So one issue I had was I couldn't. Um, it took me a long time to talk to girls, talk to women. Mm. It's like that was one thing that I couldn't do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I I would like if I go up, I would freeze up or. Like, you know, that whole tunnel vision yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's how it would be. Mm. It's like I would go and whatever I would go say, I lose it. And then, um, you know, that's just how it was. And my brother, see, my brother was always the type ladies man type. Mm. But see, this was in high school. After high school, I kind of, I start, after I start working at Zaxby's, I start hanging out with dudes that kind of took me under their wing. Helped you. And then, yeah, they helped me out and then, and, and, Kind of just, you know, help me loosen up and, and, and take the edge off. Were you like that with just people in general or was it just girls? Like With just girls, yeah. Oh, just, just girls? Because if I'm trying to, yeah, like if I'm trying to. Holler at a girl. Holler at a girl, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. 
like I've always, you know, been, I guess people call me nice or whatever. But yeah, with girls, that was a no go. That was a no go. <laughs> you got a girl now, right? I got a girl now. Were you froze up with her when you tried to talk to her? Or? I talked to her on Facebook. Mm. So one of my best friends had told me about her. And I had just got out of a relationship. So I was like, I, I ain't really dealing with no 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 girls right now. I want to be single. And I hit her up one day on uh actually I had met her. We went out with him to uh Mellow Mushroom. Mm. And I kind of saw her and I was like, I just didn't want to really be dealing with nobody. Yeah. So and I saw her and then we just kinda I didn't I maybe said one or two words to her. And then I I went back home. And then a couple months later, I just, my buddy said she asked about me one day, and then a couple weeks later, I hit up mm. on Facebook. That's fire, That bro. Facebook's messenger, man. <laughs> that Facebook messenger, do, do, it work wonders, man. Now, what's really weird is when you texting a girl or if you, like, off Facebook, and then you see her. I don't know if that's just weird to me, but, like, it's kind of hard to, like, develop a conversation when I really haven't talked to you, but I just text you. Like, I don't really know how you act vocally you know what i'm saying so let's say if i'm texting you for three months but we never really talk and i see you in person it might be awkward i don't know if you've ever been through that before like you just texting even a nigga that you know or whatever like you never really like a nigga off twitter that you might be talking to or something like that do you meet him you'd be like oh, that's kind of weird because <laughs> i don't really know how to converse you because you really don't act like how you do on twitter yeah i don't know it's just i don't know man life is weird <laughs> more or less story man life is weird yeah i mean kinda but i mean i i was on that I was on Tinder and stuff a, a little bit mm. before I met her, so I had those situations to where, you know, you talk to girls for a week or so, a week or two, and then you got to go out and meet them. Yeah. But never the, been weird. The conversation was okay. It was always how they look. Mm, they look it was different. either how they look or it was how, um, what I'm gonna say, it was either how they look or it was just something, man. You never got catfish, did you? Like a complete different person. No, no, no. Oh. Never got catfish, but it was, yeah. It was just usually how they, uh, how they look, man. Okay. How they look, and it was just a lot of girls was freaks on that, man. Definitely, definitely. But I didn't understand that. Oh, you didn't know that? Huh? You didn't know that? I knew it, but I was in denial <laughs> because back in the day, like I would have been all over that, but. You know, I got saved. You know what I'm saying? When did you get it's saved? Try to start uh, about three years. I mean, I went to church my whole life, so probably about 2015 is when I really start. You know, trying to you know change my life and stuff. But uh, yeah, so like I'm trying to go into this thing to find something serious. Yeah, you know, and I ain't looking for no she want a Christian mingle or none of that. I did Christian mingle. That didn't work out. I, I didn't like those types of sites because they were people wasn't really active on their profiles mm. and people were usually far out and it wasn't a lot of people. Ain't no nobody on Christian Mingle in Jacksonville. For real? No. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I had no idea. Bro. But uh, at least for, for me that I was attracted to or, or wanted to do anything with or take, you know, take a step with. But, but yeah, that was it, man. It was just, you know, big waste of time though, man. But yeah, I mean, stay away from that. Definitely. That tender, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, hey, is that what you're looking for? But if you're looking for something serious, definitely. I, don't I know a tender. couple people that got married on there, but for me, it didn't work. Yeah, I, I've never met anybody who got a really uh, successful relationship off Tinder. To be honest with you. Yeah, man. And one of my one of my good friends, he used to strike gold on that man. I ain't gonna say his name, but <laughs> you know who you are, man. That's crazy. You know who you are. Shut man. them. Shot, yeah, shot, shot. My homeboy just got a girl pregnant off of there, so shout out to him, man. Ugh. Not on purpose either. <laughs> oh, God. Well, on that note, let's get back to child support talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect segue. <laughs> perfect. But yeah, man, that's it. We went off on something else, but basically, if you, if you, if you don't be afraid, I was afraid because I heard so many horror stories about how. Mm-hmm. You women, you know, men don't have any rights. They do you wrong. They do, you know, I I was afraid to even go through that. So I was like being a simp, you know, being on the hoe, basically yeah. letting her treat me any kind of way because I was afraid to go through the court system because mm. listen to everybody else telling me I don't have rights and how it's going to go and all of that. But men, go through it, get your lawyer, do what you got to do because you have rights as well. 
and you can get your time sharing and get your child support to a good um good rate and uh holidays all that type of stuff taxes every other year whatever whatever you want to do do it man do it but uh let's see here i saw a post on uh facebook i guess you don't have kids i got a child and it was saying how disciplining your child like whooping your child will like mess with them mentally like give them mental issues mm-hmm. do you do you do you believe that you never heard that before though Is not that like time? on a not like on a news like this was on the like on a news station i never heard that i've never seen a news but i've seen it done in like psychological tests like psychologists will like tell you that type of stuff so like i've done because i've took a psychology class and like they would just be like you to give you like uh like some people it'll just mess up their mental or whatever you know like i don't know that's what people say i mean i can understand if you're beating the hell out of them um i guess they just say like that type of discipline is not the right type of discipline that's what they would say so be- what type of discipline did you get? Um, I've, I'm not a bad child. So. so you didn't get whoopings? One time by my dad, my mom was like about to fight my dad because it was wrong. Because he wasn't supposed to do it. Because like he thought I did something I really didn't. She got really mad. But no. Like I'm not a... I, I never really needed discipline. So I got whoopings. I mean, I did stupid. I stole stuff. I yeah. got a whooping for that. I got like a eraser tattoo one day. And I got a whooping for that. <laughs> Eraser tattoo? What? Like what? Well, my brother put a eraser tattoo, uh, like on a pencil. Okay. Like back then, you just keep going and yeah. you put a mark, and then what happened? We was out to dinner, and it started to scab up, and it was R W my initials, <laughs> and it scabbed up R W, and it was like obvious, like what? How? How is this so symmetrical? Like this? Like how did this happen? And you know, my daddy had a weight belt because my dad was a bodybuilder. Mm. You know, my whole life. And that's the only time we ever got the weight belt. Me, I only got the weight belt. He didn't get a whooping. Oh, he both of us got okay. the weight belt. Okay, okay. What what is that? Huh? A weight belt? Yeah. Oh, like the thing you put around their waist or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, man. we got the weight belt. That's okay. crazy. That. <laughs> hold on. How bad is that? That sounds like something that'll scar you mentally. That uh, that must have been crazy. Man, you know. I don't know, man. A whooping is a whooping to me because. I try to take stuff in stride. Like if I do something wrong mm-hmm. or deserving a punishment, I try to understand and and understand why I got that type of punishment. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Don't my parents, I'm going to believe what they doing is the best for me mm-hmm. or what they trying to do is the best for me to make me a better person, human being. So I ain't had no problem with it at that time. But I, I mean, I guess I'm all right, but. You know that weight belt was real, man. That sounds real. I, like, I don't, never want to put on get put on my body. Yeah, we jump around, boy. We <laughs> run around that house, boy. But like episode of good times, dodging shots. That episode of good times where James had whooped that uh, I forget he whooped some kid and he couldn't sit on his uh, he couldn't sit on the chair because the booty was uh tingling or whatever. So that's crazy. Yeah, mom. But yeah, man. But I don't. I don't think I'm. I have a child, and I'm gonna. I kind of like, so I never whooped my child, but I kind of nudged him to get his attention because he was kicking my car seat. Mm-hmm. And I had to like get his attention because he was being, you know, acting out. So uh, I did that once. And you know, you, you didn't get whoopings, but my parents used to always be like, you know, I don't want to do that. That hurt my feelings to do that. Yeah. You know, after that, I'm beat the hell out mm-hmm. of you. And then I'd be like, man, whatever. If you felt that way, why are you doing it in the first place? Mm-hmm. But that's the truth, man. I felt bad, just, and I didn't even whoop him. I just kind of, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel bad. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Yeah, definitely. And he started, and it was this cry. It was a different cry from mm-hmm. what he would usually do. Usually cry. And then I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, yeah, I feel that, that that touched the nigga, man. I was like, man, that's uh, and I haven't, you know, did anything, but like I don't know. I believe in trying to talk to the kid or whatever, because I feel like. I don't know. Some kids they may need more than talking though, because it's it's like um it's like some hard headed people, you know. Like you tell them like don't mess with that person, like you gonna get cheated on. They do it anyway, and you just like you you had to learn your lesson yourself, you know. So I feel like different people need different type of disciplines. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure, man. Because everybody ain't the same. Mm-mm, not at all. But uh, people told me to try like uh, timeouts. I don't know how you do timeout. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I can't imagine a timeout ever working. I just. 
I mean, what you would, I mean, what would I do? Like put a chair in the corner and say, go sit in the corner yeah, for five minutes. I can't, I can't see that ever working. I feel like that's a terrible, <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrible disciplinary, dis, disciplinary act. Yeah. That's it's like, terrible. you know, put them in jail or something for like five or 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. But. I guess in conclusion, I ain't for that. Yeah. And I guess hell, when you have kids, you gonna have to, you have to figure that out. Yeah. But it, I guess it depends on however your girl or wife was raised. But mm-hmm. then that's something y'all gonna have to. Yeah. Co co parent. Co parent. I just wanna put it out there. I before we end this, I definitely don't want kids. So if you're a lady looking at this and you're trying to hook up with me, I don't want kids. So. What? Nah, I'm not a kid person. I'm How not. How you a, feel that way right now, man? I, I'm not a people person. Like I'm, I'm to myself. So if I imagine I get a wife, and I really like her, I just want to be me and her. I don't want an extra kid. I just don't like kids like that. That's not my thing. Man. I don't. I can't ever see myself wanting a kid, <laughs> ever. That's not me, man. I'm too, too much. I'm too like selfish to myself. You know. I don't really want to take care of a kid. <laughs> just I'm being honest, man. Mm. I'm gonna give you about five, give you about five, eight, five to eight years, and then we'll see how you feel. Hey, damn, that nigga still don't got a kid. <laughs> nah, we'll man. See how you feel, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. But hey, it, as long as you know that, man. Yeah. Take the take, take the precautions to do what you need to do not to have one, man. I, I just want to put this out here. I want to do a full episode with you on like like later, like one day. On Christianity, by the way, you do yeah. so. So, what what would what would what would the question be? Um, nothing. I'm just curious about your whole like story. You know, you say you were you always went to church, but then you specifically went back to get saved. Um, I don't know, I'm just I'm just oh curious okay about story. yeah yeah you we know? can do that. It's not like a questioning Christianity thing. It's just like oh a, okay. It's just like a, your story. I think is I think it's interesting. You know, because I never heard it. Like fully, so I would just love to do a whole episode about you. Like, it may be somebody be inspired. Then maybe they're going down the wrong path. They hear and they be like, I, you know, maybe I don't want to get saved too. So, so that'd be interesting one day. Yeah, man, that's that's. Yeah, we'll do that, man. Yeah. So for the we'll people that, that want that, just stay tuned. So the people want that, man, stay tuned. So we're at 46, 47. We're gonna go a little longer because I got a couple things to talk about. Yeah. I had a lot more to talk about, but I got two products. Y'all know I'm on the health. I got to remember to stay close to this mic. I'm on a, you know, I do the little healthy thing when I can. And I got two products that y'all can try out. The first the first one is black seed oil. And uh, black seed oil is, is, is black cumin seed. And they, I get, they say cold press it. And mm-hmm. that's how they get the oil. Mm. It's from, um, what's they call it? Um. Not Africa, but I forget the damn. Is it a country, continent? A small plant. It say grows in Eastern Europe, West Asia, and yeah, the Middle East. Middle East is what I meant okay. to say. But uh, yeah, it got a lot of good benefits, man. For me, I was taking it because I have high blood pressure. You know, a lot of black people have high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. It's usually hereditary or mm-hmm. if you overweight or whatever, they say it can help you um, lose weight as well. They say it has tumor-reducing properties, mm-hmm. um, antioxidants in it. Um, it, tastes, it tastes bad, kind of bad, but what I've noticed, the older I'm getting, what's good for you don't taste good a lot of the time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I've been on the sugar. I ain't had sugar in a long time. I mean, the, like the food I eat may have a little sugar, but I haven't had actual candy, mm. donuts, uh, cookies, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just staying away from that because I was having a lot of inflammation in my body. And uh, like I was went, going to the doctor trying to figure out what's wrong. Like I was getting my kidneys checked, getting my back checked. And come come along to find out it was because of all the sugar. Because I used to eat a lot of candy coming up mm. and all that type of stuff. So sugar is like, I guess if you eat it like I ate it, it's not good. to so like everything, eat it in moderation. Yeah. Eat in moderation, but try that. Another good thing about black seed oil is it uh 
it uh increases your blood flow. Is this something that you drink directly, or do you put it like you mix it in with something? Or? So you can do a teaspoon mm -hmm. or a tablespoon. I was doing a teaspoon, mm. and you can put it on your. Uh, it's supposed to help your hair grow. I never did it because I'm not. I'm getting. I'm thinning out a little bit, but I don't care. Once it's time for me to chop it off, I'm gonna chop it off. I so you ready to go bald? Yeah, yeah. I ain't fighting it. Man. I mean, you're not somebody because they. <laughs> They oh, hold on, man. like oh no, mm -mm. I ain't gonna play them games. I ain't gonna be Brian out here. Yeah, he just will not get up. So I'm, no, I'm glad no, you know no, when no, to give no, up. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. When when time is up, time is up. Okay, fellas, let it go. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> let it go for real, man. But back on the black seed oil, like I say, half a teaspoon. I'm in a teaspoon full. Take it. Um, it's a lot of good benefits, healthy benefits. Of course, make sure you're getting a good brand because every brand, you know, got um. And I don't have my black seed oil to tell y'all what the brand is, but y'all can do the research on your own because I believe in y'all. Y'all are smart people. But the one of the good things about it is it's supposed to make your Johnson bigger. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that one. Yeah, I really wouldn't expect that Me either. That. But check this out. So women have a lot of things they can do. Women can snap their coochie back. So let's say if they was going out doing crazy stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's say if they were going out doing crazy stuff, okay. you know, being Wait. street work, I mean, uh, sex workers or whatnot. Okay. I forgot what it is. It's women, they can do something and, and, and make their vagina tighten mm -hmm. back up. Mm -hmm. So men, you know. This something for a man. Like if you want to do it, it really just increases your blood flow. Hold on, do you like do you like eat it and you like salt bay it on your your meat? So apparently it? you could you rub it in and it's supposed to help the girth you of your Johnson. It. Yeah. Is it like hard? No, it's an oil. Oh, it's oh, I'm tripping. It's oil. It's oil. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. Well, it's a seed first, but then they mm -hmm. cold press into an oil. So you uh you rub it in, supposed to make your uh make your Johnson bigger after like two weeks to a month. I so. don't know if I should ask this, but have you tried? Yeah, I tried. <laughs> any, what? Any results? Yeah, but I'm not consistent. Okay, okay. okay. So, so you have to be consistent. Of course I tried. Okay. Like, I tried. Like, I'm the type of nigga, like, I, um, <laughs> like, I be looking for stuff, especially as I'm getting older. Like, a lot of stuff. Like, I'm all into products, yeah. health stuff, and, you know, if it seemed deemed healthy, I tried. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing no you ain't nothing to worry about. Nah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But take the oil. It makes your uh I mean everything helps. It makes your like orgasms make you you more sensitive in that area. All that type of stuff. So it helps out in that way too. But uh y'all try that, man. Y'all try that, man. I was on Twitter one day. How you like Mandingo, man? <laughs> <laughs> y'all remember who Mandingo was, man? <laughs> Y'all oh, trying to be man. like Mandingo, get on that black seed or make it happen, man. That's, that's funny, man. <laughs> that's funny. And the last one I want to tell y'all about is matcha tea. Matcha green tea. I was just, I just been trying. This is the first week I've been trying this. So I used to drink coffee and coffee didn't, uh, I just didn't do well with me. Mm -hmm. So I tried a matcha green tea and... They have two types. They have ceremonial matcha, which is the good stuff to drink. And then they have culinary matcha, which is, you know, to cook for. Mm -hmm. The culinary is usually a lighter green and it's not and it's more bitter. Mm. So it's not gonna be as pleasant to drink. The ceremonial matcha is more of a deep green, like a deep chlorophyll green type color. Yeah. And <clears throat> um I'm going to say deep green and it's smoother to drink. Mm. Either both of them cuz kind of taste they taste earthy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All this stuff is is good for your health. You know, herbs and that type of stuff is not going to be good. They sell flavored stuff, mm -hmm. but like I say I'm staying I, I I haven't been doing any sugar, so mm -hmm. um I get everything <laughs> sugar free and I uh and I've been trying it, man. Nah, yeah, I definitely want to try some like more healthy stuff. So I'm gonna look into this. I bought you some matcha, man. I brought you a matcha packet that's in there. Really, you and M, man. man. You and M, man. Hey, give me some, man. I bought y'all some you, singles. I, I appreciate that, man. I bought y'all some singles. I went to uh, <clears throat> vitamin shop. Okay. 
and I got a couple singles, man, because I got some coming in the mail. So, so I just, I had to grab so I just for myself. drink it raw. Don't mix it in with nothing. Water, water, put it in. Okay, so I guess a little hot water. water. Okay, hot water. Yeah, okay. you want to do it? You want to do it? It's like coffee now. Okay, okay, okay. That's what so I, I got to do it in the morning. Okay. So do it. Don't do it on an empty stomach. You're not. It's not good to drink tea on an empty stomach because okay. the tannins make you uh make your stomach upset. Okay. Okay. And make your stomach upset. But a couple health benefits of that is it got it's packed. It's got like triple the amount of antioxidants in it because mm. how they make this tea is they get the leaves and they, they instead of just shaving them like they doing like in regular green tea, mm-hmm. they grind them up. Mm. They, it's a powder. Okay. It's a powder, and then they, uh, you see, like the whisk. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that, I see it. I see it. But you see that whisk. I don't got that. You know, I'm not in it, into it like that. Yeah. I just, you know, I just like to try stuff, and you know, just trying to change, man. Yeah. Do do do. Just do better. Man. Nah, yeah, like, hey, man. I mean, I hear when they say you eat healthy, you feel better. So. Yeah, man. But uh, like I say, like everything say, boosts metabolism, burn calories, detoxify effectively and naturally, calms the mind and relaxes the body. That's one thing they say it does help you calm. It helps calm you. Um, you know how coffee, you get jittery. Mm-hmm. And even though coffee, it, it makes you alert, but it's kind of over the top sometimes. Coffee okay. do too much. Yeah, it's I'm- supposed to be just right. Okay. It's supposed to have a good balance in effect. Okay, I'll try um, this. Because I never had coffee a day in my life, so. I'm you didn't? Place. Nah, I'm not. I'm not a, I don't really eat and drink a lot of stuff. When you talking about eating sugar, I don't eat sugar. Like, I, I don't eat cookies or candies. That's, like, nasty to me. How, much, how many times do you eat a day? Once. So, you fast a lot. That's good, man. I mean, but when I eat, it's not, like, healthy at all. Like, I ate, um, like, when I do eat, let's say if I go to Chick-fil-A, I'm getting, like, four chicken sandwiches and two large fries. I'm eating in one city, and I don't eat for the rest of the day. Well, Chick Fil A is, I ain't gonna say it's good, but it's not bad. It's not yeah. Church's chicken, yeah, or Popeye's chicken. Yeah, I don't you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I want to say rich in fiber, chlorophyll, like I said, and vitamins enhances mood. Mm-hmm. So it might help your mood out, man. Aids and concentration provides vitamin C, selenium, chromium, zinc, and magnesium prevents disease. Of course, everything say that lowers cholesterol and blood sugar. So if you're diabetic, that can help as well. Right. So that's another product I was just giving y'all. I've been doing it for a week. Uh, I'm gonna try it out, man. Just trying to do better, Definitely. man. Definitely. Just trying to do better, man. But uh, I'm gonna ask you something another thing about your um, to eat, man. We got to get in the gym, man. <laughs> we do. You got to get in that gym with me, we man. We do. I, I like to play basketball, and I need. To, I just I want to work on my cardio because when I play basketball, I get tired super quick. So. So I'm pretty good at basketball, but I, I can't keep the stamina. So I do need to go to the gym. And the gym is a good place to meet people. I don't care for that. But but I, well, I know you don't care for it, but it's like, it, it's a, you know, it's easy to socialize. Yeah. Because I have social anxiety, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like really dealing with people. Well, it's not even social anxiety. It's just I don't really care for, like, people in general. Like, I don't really care for people, so... Like, I could talk to people, like, all day if I wanted to, but I don't really care for meeting new people. Okay. But, no, I'd definitely take you up on your gym offer. I'll socialize all we day. We coming out, man. We, we coming there. We can, we can do a little something, man. Let me know. I'll bring the camera and everything, man. Do a little workout video. Hey, man. Let me know. Y'all want that, man? If y'all want that, let me know, Yeah, man. comment it below. It don't really matter, because y'all going to get it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter what y'all want, man. You gonna get it, man. Y'all gonna get it anyway, Facts. man. But uh, yeah, man. But but plug anything you want, man. I think this is a good session, man. Everybody, I just I wanted to bring Eric on him because <laughs> I was rough on him first, <laughs> and I felt bad afterwards. So okay, so I, I I started off with your first impressions. What are your lasting impressions now after finally talking to me? This is our first time ever talking. Uh. Like I heard you on your po- on the podcast and stuff, man. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought you were funny because you clown me on the night. Look, I'm gonna tell you, I don't laugh at everybody's jokes, <laughs> especially towards me. But when you say, uh, "I sound like I got slaves," and and whoever, uh, what's that nigga name? What's that old white, the old slave dude, to boom Jim down. Crow? Oh, Jim Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I sound like whoever that nigga Jim Crow. That's who I sound like. I was like, man, that's you know what I'm saying. That's that's genius, man. But you made that happen, man. And I had to, I had to give you props with that, man. But 
Yeah, like I say, man, you you know what I'm saying? You good people. You, I had to go fix the uh, camera, but I appreciate that, man. You young, yeah, man. You younger, but you know, I have to understand that. <laughs> That's all. Like I said, when you when you see me or when you hear me on the podcast, like on Eminem podcast, you're getting a um exaggerated version of me because when you like just chill with me in real life, I'm just much more calm, nigga. So if that's for anybody who may see me around Jacksonville, if you think I'm just going to be like a overhyped nigga, you're going to get the complete opposite. So Yeah, that's what it is, man. Plug it. Plug whatever I you mean, got to plug. Just, it's, it's really nothing, man. It's probably going to go on my YouTube channel anyway, but if it doesn't, Eric the Young God, um, it's really about it, man. Just go follow me. Like I say, E-R-I-C-T-H-E-Y-O-U-N-G-G-A-W-D. And um, I don't know, man. God bless. Y'all know what this is, man. Ra-ra-da-dilla, man. It's another episode of Easy Does It, and we out.